God bless you. Good evening, New Heart Christian Center and our community and the community that is watching and listening tonight. All of those that follow us, we want to tell you good evening. Happy New Year. God bless you. We're happy uh, to be before you on Word on Wednesday. Amen. Hopefully that we have something to just give you that will enlighten your spirit, that will soothe your soul. Amen. And we're just going to allow God to have his way. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for all that you are, all that you're doing in our lives. We certainly do believe that you're doing new things for us. Hallelujah. We certainly do believe believe that greater is coming. And God, we just thank you tonight. We ask that you would just open up our hearts, open up our understanding, Lord, to receive of you. And Lord, we give your name the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Once again, happy new year to you. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm glad. I'm glad because I do believe that God, as the preacher said on Sunday, that he's doing a new thing. I do believe that God is getting ready to turn it around for us. I do believe that God uh, is going to perfect that which concerns us. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, uh, we want to put a focus uh, on Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, amen, just have a few words for you tonight. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9, amen, we're going to be talking about better things, better. I want you to tell somebody in your household that God's going to make it better for you. Tell them tonight, God's going to make it better, better things, hallelujah, God, things are going to get better, just say better. Hallelujah. So uh, six and nine, we're in Hebrews, says that, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Glory to God. And the things that accompany salvation. How many of you know tonight that God is going to make it better because better accompany salvation? When you are in the Lord, we know that every day is not Sunday. Huh? We know that every day is not sunshine, but what we do know that better goes with salvation. We do know that God has a way of turning everything around and causing it to work out in our favor. Mm -hmm. Better goes and the things that accompany salvation when you are in the Lord it certainly uh, doesn't matter what you do at times when you step out of the Lord but because better accompanies salvation he always has a way of causing you to find your way back because better accompanies salvation it goes with it. The two go hand in hand. They work right with each other. Better and salvation. And the things that accompany salvation. What things? Better things. That means that everything in your life, God wants to turn, God wants to fix, and cause it to be better. Hallelujah. The things that accompany salvation. You know what? I, I should be better than I was 10 years ago. I'm better now. I'm better now than I was five years ago. I'm, I'm better now than I was even two years. Why? Because they are the things that accompany salvation. And Paul, uh, Luke said here in Hebrews, he says that uh, he was persuaded better things. Because he was persuaded because he knew how God worked. Huh? He knew how God operated. Huh? 
He was persuaded that there would be better things. And I, I'm persuaded tonight that better days are ahead. I'm persuaded tonight that things will work. I'm persuaded tonight that things will change for the better. Hallelujah. The gospel right now is being preached all over. Hallelujah. There's more people that are tuning in on Facebook that would have never have come to church. Why? Because better accompanies salvation. God takes our crisis and he turns it in to a blessing. Because that is how he operates. That is how he works. And so we're talking about the things. The things that accompany salvation. Huh? Why did he have to make better things? Because things that go with salvation, sometimes what comes with that are trials. What comes with salvation are tests. And so because of those tests and because of those trials, God then had to bring better along to cause uh, things to be better. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. And the things that accompany. What things accompany salvation? God said, I want to give you vis visual evidence. Visual evidence of the things that accompany. I want to do it right before you. I want to manifest it right before you. Visual evidence. Huh? We know what the scripture says later on in Hebrews 11 and 1. Huh? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and it is what? The evidence of things not seen. Now faith. You turn you turn the word now around, what does it say? One. So that lets us know things are getting better because we've already won. Huh? Now faith. Huh? Now means one. You've already won. But even now, we've got to further believe that we've already won. We got to know that we've already won. We got to believe that because it is the thing that accompanies salvation, it goes with my saved life. Huh? Better things go with my saved life. I got to understand that I have already won. Hallelujah. Next thing, uh, I understand that uh, what I believe, what I believe right now, faith will manifest itself. The evidence of things hoped for huh? or the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But our faith will manifest itself. huh? It will manifest the evidence. See, we hope with expectation. That is what we are now. We hope. huh? We hope with expectation. Huh? We, we're, we're looking to those things. We're looking to those things are above. You ought to tell somebody you have to change your view. You have to change what you're looking at. You have to change your focus. You have to change uh, your laser. You got to change it. Huh? It says to seek those things out what? Above. Not those things that are beneath. Not those things to the left or the right. None of those said seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits on the throne. Huh? And so if you're ever wondering about me, you got to know that, that I'm looking above. Huh? My focus is above. I, I'm, I'm looking to Jesus. Huh? I'm looking to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. What, 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 what does that mean? The author and the finisher of our faith. That means that he started it. And not only did he start it, but he also finished it. And he who also started a good work in you will also complete it. Don't you worry about it. Huh? You, this, this won't be the end of the story. This is not it. God have 
better things in store for you. Better. The things that accompany salvation. There's more work to do. There's more souls that need to be saved. There, there are more folks that need to be delivered. That's not it. Hallelujah. That's not it. There's more fellowshipping. There's more worship. Hallelujah. There's more conferences. There's more revivals. This is not it. He says better things are going to accompany the salvation. Hallelujah. Just because I am God. Hallelujah. And so, so he says, I'm persuaded in this. I'm confident. I'm not only I'm persuaded, but I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident in better because we serve a God who's greater. We serve a God who's better. We serve a God who's wiser. I'm confident that better things of you, the things that accompany salvation. And so he goes back. I want to take your attention back to verse 4 in Hebrews, chapter 6. This was against those who may have backslid or those who may have thought about backsliding. Verse 4 says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Mm -hmm. Huh? For those who have once come to the light, it is impossible and you have tasted of the heavenly gift and you were made partakers with God if you shall fall away. Mm. It's impossible. It's impossible if you fall away. It, this simply means not that, not that you wouldn't stumble. Not that you uh, that you wouldn't have some struggles, but it meant that it, it that it would be completely impossible for you to completely backslide if you were enlightened and if you had tasted of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. And see, many of us had some stumbles. Mm -hmm. Many of us had some things that kind of pushed us. Yeah, it did. It pushed us. Many of us had some things that kind of shook us. But we find ourselves getting back up. Why? Because we've been enlightened. We've tasted of his goodness. And when you taste something good, hallelujah, you want more of it. When you have tasted something good, you remember. You remember how it tasted when you taste something good. When you've been enlightened and you've come to the light, it's impossible for, for darkness to creep back in and overtake the light. Hallelujah. At some point, the light is going to still shine over darkness. So what they're saying is impossible for we who've been enlightened to completely backslide and don't find our way back. Hallelujah. This is why he talks about a better, better way, better things. Huh? Because when we are in the Lord, that light is always shining in us. It's always showing us better. It's always showing us a better way. It is always showing us better things. When you are in the Lord, you're constantly having the light. Huh? Then it says, uh, then it says, and then you tasted of his goodness. You became a partaker. That means a partaker means that now that you have now shared in the inheritance of the heavenly gift. This is what makes things better because we are partakers. His inheritance is our inheritance. We are partakers of the heavenly gift because God decided to make those things better for us. So it's impossible for one to turn from the Lord and not turn back. I don't care how far you run, how long you've tried to stay away from him. If, that, if you've been enlightened, you'll find your way back. You'll find your way back to him. So better things. Tell your neighbor in the house, better things. And so the writer here begins to give an example. 
of uh, the goodness and the severity of God. Begin to give an example. Verse 7 says, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it's dressed, receive a blessing from God. Huh? The earth that bringeth the rain receive a blessing. The earth, the rain falls on the earth, receive a blessing. The herbs receive blessings. All receive blessing from God. That tells us that God does what? He, he reigns on the just and also the unjust. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns on the just. And also, the un God has chosen to bless the just and the unjust. So I don't, I don't get too caught up. But sometimes we say it looks like folks who ain't living saved, they more blessed than those who are saved. That's because he reigns on all, just and unjust alike. Because that's what the scripture just said. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it, the rain comes on the earth. And bringeth forth herbs. It brings forth herbs. Designed for them who it is dressed, receive a blessing from God. So everybody received the blessing. Everybody, everybody received blessing. But then he says, But that which beareth thorns and uh, briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. And so everyone receives the blessing. But that place where there's thorns, God said, is rejected and will receive cursing, whose end will be burnt. The point of this is that you can't get too caught up into what others are doing. You can't get too caught up into what others have and how others are living. You, you, you can't get caught up in that. What God says that the earth brings in the rain. And all those that are on it receive of the blessing from God because he reigns. Just, unjust, saved, unsaved, he reigns on all. But the writer did put a distinction. But there's a difference. Even though he reigns on all, even though all receive the blessing, but he says, but listen here, I'm confident. I'm confident, but there's better things of you that, and the things that accompany salvation. You, you that have salvation, you, we that are saved, but there's even better for us. There's even better than the blessings that fall upon the earth. And so we can't put God's blessings into a box if it's not a house, if it's not a car, if it's not a home, whatever. We can't put his blessings into a box then, then we're not blessed. See, those are things he said he reigned upon the earth anyway. He'll give us those things anyway. But he said, but there's better things than that. The things that accompany salvation. Glory, hallelujah. Even outside of the materialistic things, he said, better things. I'm persuaded. Hallelujah. That means that there's things that are more important than the material things. Hallelujah. If I don't have the car, but I have Jesus, I'm blessed. My God Almighty, if I don't own a house, but I have Jesus, glory to God, I am blessed. Because that is the better that he was talking about and the things that accompany salvation. I'm blessed, you know why? Because I'm a partaker of the heavenly gift. I'm blessed because I have an inheritance in him. I'm blessed because I have everlasting life. Hallelujah. And I'm not rejected. That's why I'm blessed. I don't, I don't put God's blessings and favor into a box of just only materialistic things. The things that concern our soul are the most important. And this is why the writer says, and the things that accompany salvation. The things that go with your salvation. The things that pertain to salvation. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he says, not only the things that accompany salvation, better things. Better things. How do we know this? Because skip over to the next verse. Hebrews 6 and 10 says that for God is not unrighteous to forget glory. Let's stop there. God is not unrighteous to forget. Tell somebody, God don't forget. God has not forgot. God has not overlooked you. He's not unrighteous to do that. Huh? God has not forgot. He's not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor. Let me tell you something. Everything you've done, everything that you're doing, that you think others did not see, God saw it. He's not unrighteous to forget the labor of love. Glory, hallelujah. He's not unrighteous. We don't got to blast when we're helping somebody. We don't got to let everybody know that we gave to the poor. We had to help a family that was uh, in need. We ain't got to put all that stuff on Facebook. We ain't got to do none of that. He said that God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. What matters the most is that God sees it. God sees the little things that you do. God sees the, the little things that you did from your heart that you thought went unnoticed. God saw it. He said, I haven't forgot. I put it up. I remember. Hallelujah. I put it up so I can bless you. I remember it because I'm going to cause better to happen for you. I'm going to I'm going to cause greater to happen for you. I, I remember. Glory. Hallelujah which you have showed toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So God says, I have not forgot what you showed towards my name, how you served and yet serving. Because of those things, I've got a cause better to happen. Huh? I got a cause greater to happen. I, I love the scripture that says that I have not seen he said, I, an ear, glory, have not heard the things which he have in store. You can't hear it, you can't see it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Doesn't mean. You can't, you can't see the, 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 the wind that blow, but it doesn't mean it's not blowing. Glory. You can't see the oxygen that you have to use to breathe. But it doesn't mean it's not there. It's clearly there. You just can't see it. And that's what the scripture said that, that I have not seen. You, you can't see it, but it's something right there you can't see. Ear have not heard. You can't hear it, but it's there. Neither has it entered to your heart. What God has, because what God has in store is much bigger than what I can imagine, than what I can understand. So therefore, it hasn't entered into my heart, but it's there. That's what better things is all about. That we serve a greater God. Greater is he that's within me than he that is in the world. Tell your neighbor I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. I'm more than a conqueror. Because better things, a be we serve better, we have better things, a greater God, hallelujah, greater accomplishments. The things that accompany, it go with. God want to do greater for us because it's just the things that go with salvation. It's just the things that go with it. It's just the things that go hand in hand, better better things. I'm looking what Colossians 3 and 1 says to set your affections. You read it. You can read it. Colossians 3 and 1 says set your affections on what? Things above and things not on this earth. Hallelujah. Things above and not things on this earth. 
Hallelujah. We got to understand that sometimes our discouragement comes from relying on people to validate us. Relying on people to applause us. Hallelujah. But God would have to deny his own nature if he was to forget us. If he was to forget all that we do, all that we have done, all the love, he would have to deny his nature. His nature is just. His nature is righteous. But he would have to be unjust to deny it. And he's not an unjust God. But he said he's not unrighteous to forget. But he remembers. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you tonight. Better things. Better things. God's going to make things better. Why is he going to make it better? Because better is a part of my saved life. I don't have to settle for less. I don't have to be around anybody. I don't have to settle for junk because better goes with my save life. We want to thank you tonight for uh, tuning in, watching, and uh, listening um, what God has to say to his people for this new year. Amen. I want to remind you that he's doing a new thing. Hallelujah. He's doing a new thing in us. Hallelujah. You be blessed. Uh, may God keep you and may heaven smile upon you.